This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. Welcome to St. Andrew's United Methodist Church on this day of Pentecost. I'm really glad that you could join us this morning. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed as an affirmation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our gospel or our scripture lessons this morning. First one comes from the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on, the, on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. <clears throat> Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Mediites, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Philippia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God, declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The next scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses through 13. Chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaks by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Let us go now in prayer. Remember to pray for those who don't yet have Christ in their life. Heavenly Father, on this day of Pentecost, speak to us gathered here as you did on that first Pentecost in ways that we can all understand. Lead us to where you want us to go and do what you want us to do. Help us make the right choices to go down the paths you lead us to and do what you intend us to do. Help us live our lives that we might make a difference in the lives of those who are lost and drift aimlessly through life. We ask your guidance in everything we do. Although we have a tendency to not always follow your lead, know that deep down we know you lead us on the right path. Forgive us when we don't show your love to our fellow man and guide us as we adjust our thinking to align with yours. Provide us with the drive that will allow us to be what you desire us to be and do what you want us to do. 
We understand that the world needs change. It needs love. Let us be the ones who start the movement to bring about the change. Provide us the strength to make a difference in the lives of your children by introducing them to, your, to their Savior, your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gospel lesson this morning comes from the seventh chapter of John, verses 37 through 39. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart, shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is Pentecost. The liturgical color for the day is red. I'm sure that is because of the relation to fire. When you mention Pentecost, most people that have been believers for a period of time think of fiery tongues because of the Acts scripture we read this morning. Pentecost is much more than just believers hearing messages from God in their own language and seeing tongues of fire. We cannot minimize this aspect of Pentecost but there's so much more we must cover, and I'm going to try to do that this morning. The story from Acts <clears throat> sets the theme for the day, the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. The other New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and the gospel lesson from John chapter 17 tell us what acceptance of the Holy Spirit can mean to us. I've mentioned before what it means to accept the power of God that we're meant to possess in the form of the Holy Spirit. So this is not something new. It does seem to take on a higher degree of importance on this day of Pentecost. 
As we heard in the reading from Acts, the Holy Spirit came upon all those who had gathered together, and it came as fiery tongues. It spoke so everyone could hear in their native language and understand. This caused a lot of confusion and discussion as to what was really happening. Although there is no definite answer, there's much speculation. Everybody who has put serious thought into this can probably come up with their own reason as to why everyone understood. I have preached on Pentecost many times, and they've never followed the same angle. I was thinking about it this week, and I thought, maybe the reason everyone understood the different languages is because we're all on different paths or at different stages in our journey. We don't comprehend things the same, nor should we. New Christians don't always understand the grace of God or why we are blessed as we are. The things, these things are not really complicated. But since some can't understand why God does some of the things he does, things do get confusing to new believers. This is perfectly normal. We don't all need to be or should be at the same point in our spiritual journey. The day of Pentecost is monumental because it's a new day. It's the beginning of the new church. From this point on, we know and understand things written in the Old Testament have come true and those that have been predicted will happen. It is the start of the modern Christian church and the fellowship of new believers. When the tongues of fire came to the disciples, they heard their own language spoken. The reason they heard things differently was because they were all at different stages in their journey. Not only were they at different stages in their Christian walk, but they were developing different gifts as well. The church is made up of people at different stages in their Christian journey. This is a good thing. And it illustrates how it takes different talents and gifts to bring the church strength. How strong would a church be if we were all the same? If we had the same interest? What if we were all blacksmiths like Bob? What if we were all businessmen like Stoke and Stan? What if we were all teachers or worked in banks, like my daughters? What if we were all farmers, like Edgar and Frank? What if all the women in the church were interested in sewing and none interested in cooking? I don't want to think about that. We wouldn't have the good dinners we have, would we? What if we weren't blessed with talented musicians? What if we didn't have people who felt the need to tend to shut-ins, send cards, or feed the needy? This variety of differences is what makes this church what it is. If we were all the same, with the same gifts, talents, and interests, we could not make the difference in the community and the world we have the potential to make. The second reading from 1 Corinthians explains it is these gifts and talents that are activated by one spirit and they are meant to be used together to grow and strengthen the universal church. We must, as Christians, learn to work together within the universal church to grow the community of believers. I have said many times that the things that are wrong with this world can only be cured if God and his ways are the most important thing to the majority of the people. The only way this can happen is if we surrender to and follow the Holy Spirit, how and wherever it leads us. When we follow in the Spirit, 
We are one in the Spirit. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus invites all who are thirsty to come to him, and he will satisfy their thirst. He will not only satisfy their immediate thirst, but they shall never thirst again. Even more than satisfying your thirst, he will give you what is needed so you can go out into the world and satisfy the thirst for others. He explains that the living water he offers comes by way of the Holy Spirit. And it can be passed on to others by anyone who believes. The power of the Holy Spirit came upon those at the first Pentecost in the form of fiery tongues. If you're waiting for that to happen to you, I think you have a long wait. The Spirit has already been offered to you. The next step is for you allowing it to quench your thirst. When you drink the living water Jesus offers and accept the Holy Spirit that comes with it, you become part of God's church. When membership in that church includes the world's population, we will all live in the world we were designed to live in. Accept the Holy Spirit. Drink from the cup our Savior offers and offer others the gift of salvation that comes from God by the way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And remember, as always, the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you, the power of God protects you, and the presence of God goes with you everywhere, always, no matter where you are, where you go, or who you're with. Amen.